You got what it takes? You know, I got a little razzle dazzle. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? I love waffles. Waffles are the sugar, some strawberries, you know, with the syrup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so uh, much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for having us. Exciting. Yes, yes. And I know we're, we're all at home. So this is like no pressure, right? Because there's no set. There's no like yeah. production crew. It's just yeah. us just chilling. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Cool. Very cool. Well, you know, I want to jump in and I'm just not ready to accept the fact that y'all looking grown now. <laughs> Yes. I, <laughs> Every year we come back and it's like Mikey taller, Alex voice deeper. Right? It's yeah. Crazy. Every oh year. I think I think really that's the point of the show. They want to see young black men grow up in a society that it's hard to grow up in. I really think that's what the main story is about, like what we're going through in a sense and how we are growing up and a lot of the stuff people in the show don't agree with because we were like little babies now we're smoking weed we're doing this with you know <laughs> girls and stuff like that but it's how we are like in real life as kids and it really shows the grown folks what we have to go through and what kids have to go through i think that's important too and that's part of you know what's great about starting the show when you're younger and then each yeah. season you kind of see all of the stages um that you guys go through and yeah it's that, like you watch amazing. this it's like you grow up with us throughout the show you're watching us grow it's like you're there with us for real it really feels that way that's why i came back in season, or episode one season four i mean season three i'm like what <laughs> what happened <laughs> hold on Let's pause. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And Shaman, you have a birthday coming up, right? Yeah. This Friday. Wait, how so, old are you turning? I'm turning 16. And are you guys like starting to learn how to drive or? I actually I got my permit. Yeah. Really? You get my yeah. license. Oh, you getting your license? Okay. What about you, Michael? Uh, I have yet to get my permit. I just started high school, but yeah, I'm learning how to drive. Okay, okay. That, that's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so, Alex, I need to talk about your character's new environment in school, and I guess uh, Michael's yours as well, in this mm -hmm. new school and also Kevin's new bay, Gemma. Um, one scene that really, like, um, stuck out for me is when she comes up to y'all's character in the hallway and she's like, look, like how y'all act reflects on me, whether I like it or not, you know, and we can't just be excellent. We have to be phenomenal. And so I'm interested to see, to hear your thoughts on that because the black community already has a lot of pressure to be above and beyond, to go that extra step, to always, you know, be that phenomenal person. So Alex, curious to know your thoughts on that. Um, honestly, I think Gemma gave Kevin a push because really, he just wanted to go to the school to make his mom happy, you know? Because he was doing perfectly fine. He was in a comfortable environment. But his mom wanted him to do better for herself. And Brandon wanted him to do better for herself and actually go to the school. So Gemma giving him that conversation, it's like, dang, I really need, do need to tighten up. Because I'm here. I'm in this position that some people are not in. And I need to do better. And also, I really think he, he just really wants to win um, Gemma over you know he's <laughs> just pursuing things that and goals that he really wants to do so yeah yeah I like that and I feel like Michael your character's like yo she's crazy <laughs> and Kevin's like she's amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Shema do you feel like Papa do you feel like he feels left out or I mean yeah because it's kind of like these are the guys who I basically spent my whole life with in a way like these been my bros since day one and i feel like when you take away the trio it's kind of like i'm missing out on certain things like even though they're like in a way seem like older than me doing more stuff than me i'm still like their big brother in a way like trying to help guide them and us being in two different area codes two different schools it's kind of like i can't be there for them like papa would like to i feel that's what papa misses just growing up together having these moments and being able to say me and my bros 
went through this together. Cause it's like, I'm all the way over here, they're all the way over there. So yeah, I feel right. like this miss is overall going up. With right. Them. And also Kevin usually had like Papa and Jake, good side, bad side for his decisions. <laughs> so it's like missing the good side. It's like, oh shoot, what am I going to do without Papa? I, I have to resort to Jake, but it's like, I know Jake ain't going to steer me in the right direction 100% of the time. So he really does fall back on Gemma. She's like, not in, say, an, another papa, but just another positive spirit. Yeah. 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 So, Michael, I want to chat with you about your mm -hmm. music a little bit. What's going on with that? I heard your single that dropped late last year called Drip. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, with music itself, it wasn't something like we planned to do. Like we was in the studio, we got the beat, you know, we, we started writing down the lyrics. We got, I got in the booth, I started putting it down. And we was just like, sound good, you know, we like it. So, you know, slash artist on my resume now. <laughs> right, and it, it sounds amazing. I know, Shimon, you have music too. Yeah, I dropped a song called Lonely Nights on all platforms. Nice. Hopefully, I think I have a new project on the way. Can't say too much about it, but hopefully I can get those out this year, that. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, well, you have time now because... Yeah. All... <laughs> I probably wrote <laughs> over 50 plus songs just because I'm constantly writing every day. So wow, I, I love doing music. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so if you guys could switch roles for one day, who would you choose to play? Which character would you want to be? Papa, Jake, Ooh. Kevin? I feel like I would want to play Jake. I don't know. I would kind of pick both, you know? Because it's kind of like, it's, it's similar. It's like personalities from both characters that I would like to have, you know? Okay. So yeah. what from Kevin would, would you want? Or, or relates to you. What I like from Kevin is um, how he wants he he wants he wants his people he's like his friend and stuff to do better. You know, like in season one, you can see he was trying to talk some sense to Jake about because Jake was Jake's brother was leading him down the wrong path in life, and you can see in I believe that was episode ten. Kevin was like, you know, you can come stay with me or whatever if you want to get away from Ridge because this is not something you want to do. You know. So I think uh, that personality trait right there from Kevin is what I like. He looks out for his people. Nice, nice. And Alex, who would you play? Um, I'll do Papa. I haven't done anything comedic yet, but I really, I'm, I'm waiting to do that. So Papa, that would be a great role because it's very comedic. Yeah, yeah. That's it. You got, you got jokes, Alex. You, you got, you, you got what it takes. You no, know, I got a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So also, I need to talk bro code with y'all because look, I'm I'm a sister, so I don't know about the bro code. But Papa is talking to Maisha now, and I'm like, wait a minute, like how how does that work with the bro code? That that feels like it got broken to me. <laughs> Shaman, I'll start with you. To be be living in Chicago and knowing situations like we didn't, me and my bros in real life have went through situations like this. Obviously, we never dated, like, each other's girls. There's been situations where it's just like, yo, you know, you can't holler at Shadi. I used to talk to her. I feel like Papa did the more respectable thing. And Kevin, growing up in Matrang, I feel like it was him, like, like saying, yo, you know, I respect you coming to me as a young man and saying, hey, bro, like, I want to shoot my shot Maisha versus it being a whole argument and right. saying, oh, Papa, you, you dirty for that. Right, right. And we, we can't see Papa get dirty. We can't, we can't right. do that. That would have been interesting to see, though, to see, like, how y'all would have, you know, went at it. Like, Alex, what do you think? Would that be your, in real life, your reaction if your friend were like, hey, like, mind if I shoot my shot, bro? Um, if he, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> The situation has to come to me. It has never been bringing to me or they've never came to me about it. But, you know, life is what it is. Everybody move on, doing new and better things and improve themselves as people. So 
I mean, it, it kind of is breaking bro code to me. I, I wouldn't necessarily accept it, but some people do it. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, man, I guess sometimes you just have to roll with the punches. Yeah. And speaking of, I think we lost Michael, uh, but I think he's going to try and hop back on. Yep, here he is. Hey, Michael, look, you've uh, switched locations on us. <laughs> Thanks for jumping back in. You look great. You're welcome. So anybody who hasn't been living under a rock knows that y'all are both from Chicago. Yeah. And I, I've been to Chicago one time. Yeah. But... I wasn't there long enough to learn any kind of phrases or slang. So I need y'all to help me out. I want to know what your favorite like Chicago phrases or favorite slang. Tweaking. Tweaking. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, it's yeah, like, it's, it's like you tripping. So okay. I like tweaking. What, what's some other ones, Mikey? Um, I like the ones where like, one word means a bunch of different meanings depending on how you use it in a sentence. For example, like we would say, we would say like, it's like busting, you know? Mm -hmm. We would say it's busting, which means you could be somewhere and it's like a party, you saying it's busting, which means the, the party lit, you know, it's turnt, you know? Or if you're somewhere else, it was just like, they just got it busted, which means something big just happened, you know? Okay. I like yeah. that. But you you got to really stay updated because Chicago, they come up with a, with a bunch of different slangs. And you won't even like believe girl, it. Like girls and now, as you should. I don't <laughs> know what that is. It's like the new period. Like, oh. it's like the new period, as you should. That's what a lot of girls been saying lately. I think I relate most to um, the Michael, what you were saying when one word can mean like a bunch of things. Kind of yeah. like how, you all right? You all right? <laughs> You are all right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. I have a couple of just random questions for you guys. I'll just shoot around the room. So, Alex, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Uh, -uh. all right. <laughs> we can still be friends. It's cool. It's cool. You don't like pancakes? L listen, I, I, I love pancakes, but waffles give you that texture, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah, you, you don't get much flavor. You agree? Yeah, I love waffles. Waffles, powdered sugar, some strawberries, you know, with the syrup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shaman, are you a homebody or you like need to get out and be in the crowd? I'm a homebody. If I do not have to leave the house, I will not. I will stay in the house. Because it's like I got everything I need. I could record songs. I could food. You feel me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and I do online school. I do homeschool, so that okay. it wasn't really hard to adjust to being a homebody. All right, um, Michael, what do you wish was open right now during quarantine? The gym. Mm. The gym. I just wish that was open. The gym. All you have that, to do is get a Peloton bike. You said what? You just got to get a Peloton bike and start your home <laughs> gym. <laughs> <laughs> that that gym and like the basketball gym too. Those two gyms. Okay. And and I'll probably say uh like I probably say like malls or somewhere I go shopping because I'm not really an online person. I don't like to wait. Like I want it right then and there. I, I hate waiting. My, I will wait if I have to, but if I don't have to, then no. Interesting. Interesting. I'm more of an online. I'll go in person, but. I think I spend more money online, so maybe I should go in person more. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Um, before I leave you, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm so proud of each and every one of you. You know, our community is really aching right now. And so to see you guys on screen doing your thing, bringing that black excellence all in one spot, it really brings me a lot of joy. So I just want to say y'all stay up, stay blessed. And it was such a pleasure talking with y'all today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Definitely, definitely. All right, y'all have a good day. You too. All right, you too. All right, bye. Bye. Chicago is the greatest city on this planet. It's time for change. That's how that shit tell me, man. That's how my daddy raised me. She's been missing for days. Y'all know we can't depend on the police. We got to lean on each other. This city wasn't meant to be a jungle. There's so much more than that. If you're with me, let me get an amen.